I think it's a very normal reaction to the, to the circumstance. Someone who we know and trust and work with, Rob Porter, um, came to the President of the United States and the Chief of Staff and said, look, I, I'm being accused of these things. They are not true. Uh, for the President of the Chief of Staff to give that person the benefit of the doubt is probably a very normal and human reaction. If White House Budget Director Mick Mulvaney standing behind President Trump and Chief of Staff Kelly's initial defense of White House Staff Secretary Rob Porter, who of course resigned following allegations of domestic abuse. Joining me now, Republican strategist Susan Del Percio and Democratic strategist Marjorie Clifton, also the CEO of Clifton Consulting. Ladies, with a welcome to you both. Um, I want to remind our viewers what the president's reaction was on Friday to Porter's resignation. Here's what he had to say. He says he's innocent, and I think you have to remember that. But we absolutely wish him well. Then yesterday, as you know, he tweeted in part, people's lives are being shattered and destroyed by a mere allegation. Is there no such thing any longer as due process? Susan? However, as part of all this, there was zero mention of the ex-wives who claimed That's to be victims right. of domestic abuse. So is this a normal reaction? It's anything but normal. And let's look at those two things you just showed. One, the president going in, he knew he was going to be facing questions on this topic. This is what he decided ahead of time that he wanted to say. He intentionally did not make any mention of the victims. He decided to go out there and defend a staff member. It's the way he works. He has a twisted way of sense of loyalty. He demands it from everybody, and if they give it to him, he will stand by them. Now, when it comes to the, the tweet that you showed and that everyone's entitled to due process, they absolutely are in a court of law. This is the White House. You must be beyond reproach. There is no reason that this man should have been in the White House. After the White House counsel a year ago, Don McGahn found out that these charges by two women were, were filed against him. This, there was also police reports. The FBI said he wasn't worthy of a background. This should have been stopped then. One of the things I can only think of is, besides your reporting that people thought he was such a professional, is the president really wanted him there. And we know the president has made um, exceptions for people to see classified information, like his son-in-law, who does not have a security clearance, mm -hmm. or like the Russians, when he showed these the classified Israeli intelligence. So I can only think that this actually goes up to the president. How about your take, Marjorie, on all this? Well, I mean, the White House is experiencing something very similar to companies across America where accusations are coming forward, and it rattles an organization to the core, especially when it's someone they know and someone that they trust. But how they've handled this is very problematic. I mean, the issue with Trump's tweet was the message, the messenger, and the timing of what he said. What he said in itself wasn't wrong, but what he said and when he said it was the wrong thing at that time. And what they have is a massive cultural breakdown. I mean, we have almost weekly accounts of things Things that Trump says that are derogatory towards women. Um, he himself has been accused multiple times, and that really hasn't been sought through with a proper investigation, and there hasn't been a transparent process around that. And so transparency in terms of process, clarity, making sure it's thoroughly investigated, these are all the things that have not happened. And right now what you've got is a backlash, because the longer these things fester, the worse they get. And this was carrying on for some time, and so now that's what put, has put Michael Flynn in a very difficult spot. And you, you you mentioned those who've accused him. I'm going to be speaking to Samantha Holvey, one of his accusers in our next hour, just so you know. But I do want to get both of your reactions to Axios's new reporting. Rob Porter, Porter telling different story than John Kelly, which reads, in Kelly's telling, Porter misrepresented to him that the Daily Mail story would be about a messy marriage and divorce with allegations of verbal and emotional abuse. Kelly specifically asked Porter about physical abuse of both ex-wives and girlfriends, and Porter denied that. Now, Porter says some senior White House officials strongly encouraged him to stay and fight. He claims he never misrepresented anything to Chief of Staff John Kelly. Yeah. Clearly some conflicting stories here, Susan. So but, but how much which does is, this complicate matters? It complicates it, but what's even worse is all of this should have been thought out and planned out. As Marjorie stated, there was a lot of disconnections going on at this time in the White House. How did, could they not be prepared in the White House communications team that these questions were going to come out. They knew that the, that someone was doing a story. Even afterwards, they knew that there was a story 
following the first mishandling of, of the allegations. So they should have been much better prepared, and now it's just pointing fingers, and this is the, the typical chaos that the White House brings on itself. You know, Marjorie, well, and I will say, yes. go ahead. Yes, I mean, because you've talked about, go ahead and comment, but I know you've talked about the chaotic culture there in the White House. I do want you to address right. whether you think John Kelly stays, but please respond to Susan. Yeah, well, and I would say the one thing I think the White House has done right was when the deputy spokesperson came out yesterday and said, there's some things in this process we didn't get right. And that was actually, that was really honest, and actually mm -hmm. that's a good response in and this Donald situation. And Donald Trump was mad about it, though. That's the kicker. Right. That's the one thing well, he was upset the, about. <laughs> you're right. And that's where the problem starts at the top. And when you've got mm -hmm. issues in terms of the leadership representing a culture which is hostile towards women, and then, uh, you know, again, where Michael Flynn, what you, you're talking about whether he's going to be fired or not, I think sure. it's a question. I mean, and, and here's the deal. This issue is very different than any other crisis organizations deal with. It does, typical crisis communications and action do not apply. But the risk in the White House in this situation is one of national security. Mm -hmm. Because as Peter stated, you can be bribed. You can be, your, your position can be compromised, which compromises national security. And that's where Flynn needed to be absolutely absolutely yeah. impeccably sure of what's happened and given the evidence that's come forward it looks like a very patchy job was done they and took him at his word and unfortunately that's not enough yeah and, and I just I just want to say you you had referenced Michael Flynn I know you met John Kelly and when I you did. were just I'm sorry yeah. no, John that's Kelly. okay because Michael all the Flynn cast of characters yeah, no, we, I got gotcha. you <laughs> right.